Here we're going to look at a nice problem involving one of my favorite functions, the floor function. And I haven't done a problem with the floor function in a while, so it's nice to revisit this old friend. So let's see what we want to do. We want to show that for all odd primes p, the floor of the square root of 5 plus 2 quantity to the p power minus 2 to the p plus 1 is a multiple of 20 p. So let's see what our tools are. We'll have two main tools here. The first involves binomial coefficients, and that says for p prime and m between 1 and p minus 1, p choose m is a multiple of p. And we will not prove this. I think I've proved it a couple of times earlier on the channel, and there's probably a lot of proofs that you could find on YouTube or elsewhere for this fairly simple proof. But we will prove our next tool, which says that if we take the square root of 5 plus 2 to the 2n plus 1 minus the square root of 5 minus 2 to the 2n plus 1. So notice those are odd exponents. So our case when we have an odd prime is wrapped up as a special case of this. We'll get the sum as k goes from 0 to n of this binomial coefficient 2n plus 1 choose 2k. And then we have 5 to the k times 2 to the power 2n minus 2k plus 2. And I want to notice that that is definitely an integer. So we're going to use two things about this. We'll use the specialized case where our odd number is a prime. And then we'll also use the fact that this is an integer kind of by itself. Okay, so let's jump into the solution, and in order to look at the solution, I'm going to first prove this tool. And I'll do that just by using a binomial expansion formula. So let's take this square root of 5 plus 2 to the 2n plus 1, and then minus this square root of 5 minus 2 to the 2n plus 1 and expand each of those using the binomial theorem. So we can expand this first one as the sum as k goes from 0 up to 2n plus 1 of our binomial coefficient 2n plus 1 choose k. And then we'll have the square root of 5 to the k power and then 2 to the 2n minus k plus 1 power. So again, that's just using the binomial expansion formula for this binomial square root of 5 plus 2 to the 2n plus 1. And now we'll have something very, very similar for the second one, but that's going to be attached to a minus. That'll be the sum as k goes from 0 to 2n plus 1 of minus 1 to the power 2n minus k plus 1 because that's attached to the 2. But since uh, minus 1 to the 2n is just going to be plus 1, and minus k and k have the same parity, we can just write this as k plus 1. And then we'll have 2n plus 1 choose k, and then the square root of 5 to the k times 2 to the 2n minus k plus 1, just like we had before. So, like I said, we really have minus 2 to the 2n minus k plus 1, but that minus 1 to that exponent turned into minus 1 to the k plus 1 by our previous discussion. Now I want to notice that we can take this minus sign right here and bring it inside. And when we bring it inside, we'll change this k plus 1 to a k. So let's go ahead and do that. So that turns that into a plus, then this k plus 1 turns into a k. But now we're adding the alternating version of the sum with its non-alternating version. But that means that all of the odd terms cancel. So notice if k is odd, we have a positive version of a term up here and a negative ver version of a term down here, and those will cancel with each other. So that's going to leave us with the sum as k goes from 0 up to 2n plus 1 over only the even values of k of 2n plus 1 choose k times the square root of 5 to the k times 2 to the 2n minus k plus 1 plus itself from the other sum, but we can just get rid of the plus itself by multiplying by 2, which is the same thing as changing this exponent from plus 1 to plus 2. And then finally, we can re-index this sum 
spikes changing k with 2k, given that we're only summing over even values of k, and that's going to change our sum from k equals 0 to k equals n. So notice if, if k is changed with 2k, then that means we're really going to 2n. So that's not the upper bound of this sum, but it's the upper even bound of this sum. And now we can rewrite this. So this is going to be 2n plus 1, choose 2k. And then we'll have the square root of 5 to the 2k. But that's going to be the square root of 5 squared to the k, or 5 to the k. And then finally, 2 to the 2n minus 2k plus 2. But now notice that looks exactly like what we had over here. And then finally, we see that this is just a sum of integer terms. So whenever you sum integer terms, you definitely land at an integer term. So that means the difference of these two powers of these radical conjugate guys is an integer. Okay, so let's get rid of this and then we'll move into the proof of our main goal. So now that we've established this main computational tool right here, we're ready to prove our main result, which is that this object right here is a multiple of 20p. Okay, so let's go ahead and introduce some notation. We're going to set x equal to this number here that is inside the floor function. So there we've got root 5 plus 2 to the p minus 2 to the p plus 1. And then we can always take any number and write it as its integer part, which I'll write as the floor of x, plus its fractional part, which I'll write as these curly braces x. So this is floor x, in other words, the greatest integer smaller than or equal to x, plus the fractional part. Now, our goal is to understand the floor x and to show that the floor of x is a multiple of 20p. But towards that goal, I want to play around with this fractional part of x. So let's maybe go ahead and do that. So being inspired by the radical conjugate of this square root of 5 plus 2, well, maybe we would want to consider square root of 5 minus 2. So let's notice that if we take the square root of 5 minus 2, that's most definitely bigger than 0. Well, because the square root of 4 is equal to 2, so the square root of 5 is bigger than 2, but that's less than 1. And that's because the square root of 9 minus 2 is obviously equal to 1, so that means that this is going to be less than 1. But now if we exponentiate all parts of this, we'll see that the interior, which is the square root of 5 minus 2 to the p, is between 0 and 1 as well. Really, it's between 0 to the p and 1 to the p, but that simplifies pretty easily. But now we can invert this inequality to give us minus 1 is less than minus the square root of 5 minus 2 all to the p power, which is less than 0. And then from here, we can use the standard fact that we know that the fractional part of x is going to be between 0 and 1. And actually, by the structure of x here, we know that it is strictly bigger than 0. So that's pretty easy to see. Now we can add these two inequalities to give us this fact that we have the square root of x minus this root 5 minus 2 to the p is bound between negative 1 and positive 1. So it can't be equal to negative 1 and it can't be equal to positive 1. But now our next goal is to get some sort of handle on exactly the structure of this guy right here. So now let's notice if we take this fractional part of x minus this root 5 plus 2 to the p power, we can rewrite the fractional part of x in terms of x and the floor of x. So in fact, we can write this thing as negative the floor of x plus x and then minus the square root of 5 plus 2 to the p power. That's just rearranging this formula and then inserting it into this purple underlying thing. So now notice we get negative floor of x. And then for x, we'll insert what we set x equal to up here, but I'm going to reorder it a little bit. That's going to be minus 2 to the p plus 1 plus 
the square root of 5 plus 2 to the p minus the square root of 5 minus 2 to the p. That should have been a minus 2. But now since p is an odd number, it satisfies this condition over here, and that is that all of this is an integer. But the fact that all of that is an integer and this is clearly an integer just by the definition of the floor and then we have a power of two means that this object right here, the fractional part of x minus this square root of five minus two to the p is also an integer. So now let's see what we've got. We've got this fractional part of x minus the square root of 5 minus 2 to the p is between negative 1 and positive 1. It can't be equal to either of them, but it's also an integer. But that means that this quantity is equal to 0, as that's the only integer between negative 1 and positive 1. So that means that we've got this fractional part of x is indeed equal to the square root of 5 minus 2 to the p. Okay, so now that we've got this taken care of, we want to look at the floor of x, but we can write the floor of x in terms of x and the fractional part like this. So the floor of x is equal to x minus the fractional part of x. And so that's what we'll calculate on the next slide. So let's see where we are so far. We know the fractional part of x is equal to this root five minus two to the p power. And our goal is to understand the floor of x, which is x minus fractional part of x. So let's expand this given the definition of x as the interior of this floor. So I'm gonna bring this minus two to the p plus one out front and then I'll have plus the square root of five plus two to the p, so this is x, and then I need to subtract the fractional part, which we determined to be equal to this, so this is minus root five minus two to the p power. Now we wanna use our summation formula over here, where p corresponds to this two n plus one. So let's notice that if p is equal to two n plus one, then that means n is equal to p minus one over two, which is actually not a problem because p is an odd prime, which means p minus one is even, so we can divide by two without any trouble. Okay, so now let's plug this substitution into our formula for this sum and see what we get. So we're gonna have minus two to the p plus one plus the sum as k goes from zero up to n, but that's p minus one over two, like that. And then we'll have p choose two k, like that. And then five to the k. And then finally, we'll have two to the two n minus two k plus two, but that's gonna turn into two to the p plus one minus two k. But next we wanna take out the k equals zero term. So if we take out the k equals zero term, we'll notice that that's exactly equal to two to the p plus one. So I'll do that and I'll change my starting point from k equals zero to k equals one. Okay, so let's talk our way through that. So if k equals zero, we have p choose zero, which is one. We have five to the zero, which is one. And then we have two to the p plus one minus two times zero. So that's clearly two to the p plus one. But notice this k equals zero term will cancel with this guy that's out here. And we're just left with the sum as k goes from one to p minus one over two of all of the rest of this. Now I'm gonna factor a 20 p out of this and then argue that I'm left over with something that is integral. So let's do that. So this is gonna be equal to five times four times p. So that's 20p, so let's maybe write that down, 20p. And then we'll have the sum as k goes from one up to p minus one over two of one over p times p choose two k. But now we know that this is an integer because of our tool up here, which we didn't prove, but that's a fairly standard result. And then we have five to the k minus one. But we know this is an integer because our sum starts at k equals one. And then we'll also have two to the p minus one minus 
2k. But then you can check that the lowest power of 2 occurs whenever we plug in p minus 1 over 2 for k, but that'll zero out this power of 2 here, so this is always an integer as well. So let's notice that we've got our floor of x is equal to 20p times something which we have argued to be an integer, which means that the floor of x is indeed a multiple of 20p, which is exactly what we wanted to show, and that's a good place to stop.